Welcome back to Dream F1 and of course the main headline of this race is the return of Formula 1 to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. The relation between the track and in fact the US deteriorated after the farcical 2005 event here and Indianapolis therefore went missing from the calendar after 2007. But now it returns and it makes total sense the arguably highest level of motorsport has to make a stop at one of the most iconic racing venues in the world. Seeing as this is another Triple Crown venue, McLaren return with the special livery they have used at Monaco. Slowly approaching the halfway point of this season, the title fight is still wide open as both Mercedes and Ferrari drivers are in it, as well as Max Verstappen with Vettel in the Porsche lurking just behind them. It is yet unclear who really is the title favourite as it has been incredibly competitive at the top with all three top teams also struggling at some venues. It will remain very exciting. But it's not all good news, especially if you're a fan of Lance Stroll or in fact Lance Stroll himself. The Canadian was under immense pressure ahead of his home race last episode and that pressure has only increased after his rookie teammate Filipe Drugovic scored his and Aston Martin's first points of the season in Canada while Stroll finished outside the points yet again. Rumors say that his father is slowly losing patience with Lance and he now needs to pull off one of his standout performances that we all know is capable of every now and then. And now in the Junior Series, the Formula 3 Euro Series continued its short trip to the UK as they went racing at the iconic Donington Park. Dennis Hauger led Ralph Boschung from pole position and defended that lead going into the first corner, but the car to watch here is the red and white Prima number 3 of Oli Behrman. The young Brit started 6th and had an amazing start and took advantage of those battling around him or to already run in 2nd through the S's. This is exactly where he got a great run on race leader Dennis Hauge on the final lap and that one we're watching together in full length right now. As Berman just makes it side by side with Hauge and towards McLean's round the outside he goes he just manages to hang on to the track but now through Coppices, uh which I hope I pronounced right towards Starkey straight and towards the chicane which is one of the best overtaking spots on the track he has to defend now from Dennis Hauger Hauger uh, choosing a wide line to enter this corner trying to get alongside for the second part of the chicane oh he touches the gravel there a bit and loses position to Frederick Vesti and now Vesti might have a chance into the Melbourne hairpin against Behrman side by side to go into the hairpin Vesti has the inside, oh they are still alongside, but Behrman on the outside gets the better exit and now in the background Dennis Hauger towards the final hairpin that leads back onto the start finish straight is alongside Vesti, Behrman is going to come home and win this race, but Dennis Hauger manages to overtake Frederick Vesti here on the final lap. The Formula Inter America has returned from its break to support this week's F1 race at Indianapolis. Once again, the two blue cars of Enzo Fittipaldi and Zane Maloney started from the front row and they were battling pretty much throughout this race with Enzo withstanding the pressure of his teammate for its entirety. In the final corners of the final lap, it was Juan Manuel Correa who was able to split these two after taking advantage of an out of shape Maloney to finish a sensational second. As usual, the current junior season standings are on your screen right now and an interesting battle is forming in the Formula 3 Euro Series while Enzo Fittipaldi is slowly starting to get away in the Formula Inter Americas. And now, we have already talked about this, but finally, this is it. Dream F1 is going to the States and no, we're not just anywhere. This is the United States of America's biggest and one of the most historic racing venues. We are at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway where we take on the road course layout and it will be a pretty short lap here with just 14 turns and just under 4 kilometers of length. But this track has already seen some great racing action two weeks ago with the Grand Prix of Indiana in our Fantasy Kart Championship. Can Dream F1 just be as exciting today? If the qualifying is anything to go by then, yes, Carlos Sainz starts from pole position and after finishing second twice this season already, he finally wants to go the full way today. Behind him are Russell, Verstappen and Leclerc who all want to win this to help them in their championship fight. Lewis Hamilton a bit down the order, only in 13th 
and well, our qualifying was a really tough one as well as we just could not get a clean lap in and therefore we're starting 24th but even then I think we didn't have more than 2 or 3 tenths still in it so points once again seem to be off by uh, quite some distance. Okay here we are in last starting into the second race of our short North American tour and underway we are Oh, well, the start is a bit better than our qualifying performance, still nothing to write home about. Towards turn one we go, oh, there's an opening on the inside, and, well, they almost stop. Going into turn one, we are alongside Lando Norris. There was half a spin there, including one of the Haas. Oh, they are all getting a bit sideways through this corner here. But now, I feel everything is fine. We're up to 19th, thanks to a major dive bomb there. Oh, there is a bit of an opening. Alongside Bottas, oops. Okay. Bit of an awkward opening lap. You guys sliding around here. Whoa, dirty air. Very heavily affecting our car in that final corner there. Really need to beware. To be careful there. Oh, they're almost stopping through here. How were they so much quicker in qualifying, if this is how they're performing in the race? Oh, we're gaining on Joe now! That almost looked like an orchestrated move there with the two Alfa Romeos. Joe went past Bottas there. Oh, and now we are super close to Bottas. Come on. Oh, I'm trying to get them both! Oh! And in the end, we get neither. Or do we? Because we're still very, very close to Bottas around the outside. Oh, and it gets very tight with the wall there. Oh. Yeah, I told you with the dirty air, we get a warning for track limits. Okay, I... Well, I tend to disagree with that one. But we're past Bottas now. Oh, maybe we can even get Joe. I think we should get Joe now. Oh, yeah, we do, we do, we do. And then this time, no chance for him to hang on around the outside. And now the next car up the road, as we are into 17th, is Esteban Ocon in the Alpine, so Alpine back to the midfield it is for those two. Whoops, what was that? Okay, I just didn't have any throttle there. What? You gotta be kidding. You've got to be kidding. What was the track limit infringement there? Okay. Now that was a joke. Which track limit? I mean, I, I could have been just completely blind right now. But 
But come on, that's a joke. That has to be a joke. I'm sure I didn't leave the track there. Come on! Surely this is it this time. Let's keep it that way. Okay, we're now pretty close to Esteban Ocon. Maybe this could be our first opportunity here. Oh, we are a bit far away though. Don't try it for now. What was that? Oh my goodness me. No, 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 no. Okay, that was a very odd spin. Down to 20 seconds. And of course, a lot of tire life is what that has cost us. Oh, damn it. Okay, we're going to have another race to forget. I feel it. <laughs> no. Oh, it started out so well. But this has become... A very tough race again, oh come on. Oh surely, we didn't even gain time there, and now we get the fight. This has Barcelona 2.0 written above it. Remember that? That was an equally terrible <laughs> experience in the race. But at least we had a good qualifying there. That was super odd what happened here a lap ago. Almost like a random F122. Weird moment of oversteer. Very aggressively there. All late on the brakes against Gasly, he's still there, but we move past, okay. The next car is Lance Stroll. Okay, Alban is the first car in the pits. That seems mighty, mighty early. As we now get a good run on Lance Stroll. Whoa, a bit late on the brakes, but we managed to get it stopped in time.
okay. Well, I mean, it's not that early, I guess, because we're quickly approaching the halfway point of this race. And we're still sitting in 19. Hmm. Not ideal. But it's not... Not all hope is lost. Let's keep our head down as Lando Norris goes into the pits. He is having an even worse race. Because he's been driving in P18 in a McLaren that is capable of scoring multiple podiums. They have finished in the top three here. In the last races. Okay, we're close to Bottas once again. Oh yeah, and that surely is it. Once again, this is our favorite spot to make a move. And we move past Valtteri. And are up to, oh I can't even see it, 13th because, well, there have been loads of guys in the pit lane already. Um, we are approaching the halfway point, but the last two laps were pretty much my personal best. So, I still feel quite confident on these tires. So I'm gone, going to stay out until further notice, because, I mean, we are pretty, pretty much down the order. Oh, there goes Bottas again, trying it towards turn one. Whoa. Whew. Late on the brakes, even locking the front right a bit. Hasn't cost her that much tire life, though. And we remain in 12th now. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking about extending. Because we're so far down the order, we can take a little risk. And who knows, there could, of course, always be a safety car. And if we then can't stop under the safety car, we are going to have a major, major advantage. So let's just stay out. Um, what's happened? Okay, I had no throttle there. And now, oh, come on, damn it. What was that? Okay, I just had no throttle there. Is something wrong with that car yet again? That has cost us majorly. Seven seconds. Okay, now, who cares? Let's go in. I think now this race is over one way or another. But I, I'm really confused as to what that was. Sorry for that noise. At least we don't get a penalty for speeding in the pit lane. So that's good. Come on, guys. Give us the new tires and <laughs> let's see where we come out. Probably dead last. Oh, that's a that's a painfully long pit lane.
What? Okay, my steering wheel just turned itself off. Um... What the hell was that? <laughs> okay, I, I guess this is it. Now, finally, we are out of this race. Yet again, the sixth race, our third retirement. Um, this time... Not technical issues in the game, but uh, technical issues with my steering wheel. Which just turned itself off. Um. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. So this is us out of the race. But let's of course look at what happened in this race at the front. This here is the race start. And it's not a great getaway from George Russell. Sainz had a fantastic start there and is leading towards turn one but still he has the inside quite open and George Russell uses this opportunity to try and go alongside with Sainz. Now he's still on the inside for the next two corners. Sainz trying to hold on round the outside. He gets a bit sideways through there as he's not on the racing line and George Russell on the back straight slips through and takes the lead away from Carlos Sainz. Sainz might have an opportunity into that left hander here. No, he does not. So George Russell leads in lap one and he has kept that lead up until lap 25. He has increased the gap to about three seconds but lap 25 is when George Russell comes in for his a mandatory tire stop and then later at the end of lap 29 starting lap 30 Sainz made his pit stop as well trying to get the advantage of fresh tires George Russell of course still ahead of him in the race lead and Sainz comes out in third and this is remarkable behind Valtteri Bottas who is still yet to make his pit stop and now Bottas is kind of holding him up he has to navigate past the Finn in his Alfa Romeo quite quickly and he's having a great opportunity here towards that left-hander. Oh, he has, he decides very late to go for a move and it is not enough through that left, right, left combination. They go, oh, there's Yuki Tsunoda who is a lap down in their way. Bottas manages to stay ahead of Carlos Sainz and this is losing the Spaniard loads and loads of time and is of course a great opportunity for Russell to get away and believe it or not Carlos Sainz was stuck behind Valtteri Bottas for five whole laps he just did not manage to get his way past but that allowed Max Verstappen to get back at the rear end of Carlos Sainz. That sounded a bit wrong, but oh, they're going almost three wide towards turn one. But still, they remain in exactly that order. Well, I can tell you at the end of this lap, Bottas pitted and Verstappen was not able to pull any move on Carlos Sainz. However, George Russell will have enjoyed the help of, uh, well the former Mercedes driver to aid him to his third race victory in the 2023 Dream F1 season at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Well, and we have already seen George Russell wins this race ahead of Carlos Sainz, but he gets the point for the fastest lap. Uh, Max Verstappen completes the podium. Sergio Perez finally with a good race as he finishes fifth. Lewis Hamilton managed to climb up to 7th, uh, Oscar Piastri once again in the points for Alpine, uh, Kamui Kobayashi the final car in the points and tough luck for Alfa Romeo, Joe Guan Yu had a fantastic race here today but he finishes just outside of the points in 11th. Then our teammate Mick Schumacher only 14th and well we have seen we did not finish this race so disappointing afternoon for STV Racing uh, but this can also be said for Lando Norris who only finished in 19th and also Nico Hülkenberg in the very strong Porsche but he had some issues here today as well he finishes two laps down in 20 seconds. In the Drivers Championship this result here today helps George Russell to run away as once again when we retire he wins the race this has been the case in Kyle Army and Monaco as well so third race win of his season but still he's only 15 points ahead of Max Verstappen who is in second uh, equal on points with Carlos Sainz but Verstappen leads on countback as he has one race win more
uh, against Carlos Sainz. Leclerc then in fourth, Lewis Hamilton in fifth. Quite a sizable gap uh, for these two to the very top here. And then on the second page, we see us dropping down to 19th, uh, still with our best result of 12th from the Australian Grand Prix in Bathurst. Uh, we have just been overtaken by Joe Guan Yu, who finished 11th here today. And in the Constructors' Championship, Mercedes are leading just four points ahead of Ferrari, and also Red Bull is coming a bit closer. Porsche now dropping the ball a little bit with a you know, not so strong race result here uh, as well as McLaren but this should be a very interesting fight for fourth between Porsche and McLaren. SV Racing in ninth still on our one point uh, uh, Mick Schumacher scored in uh, Monaco and Williams Alfa Romeo and Haas still waiting for their first points finish. And that has been it for the United States Grand Prix. Uh, for the next race we return to Europe, uh, which will be the Austrian Grand Prix at Spielberg, another venue where we hopefully can achieve a good race result as we were very strong there last year. So leave a like if you did enjoy this video, subscribe to not miss anything happening on this channel and I hope to see you all the next time. Until then, goodbye.